we always are talking about the yin and the yang of what it takes to make it. Is it environment? Is it uh, nurture? Is it networking? Is it what you know, who you know, what you know, that debate? And so we, um, we have a special guest that's going to come on, and I think he's a case study on one of these. I'm not even going to lead the witness, Your Honor. Hey, you guys, welcome to another episode of Making It. My name is Kenan Cooley, and I am with the amazing man of the hour, Mr. Alvin Chia. Kenan, <laughs> it's good to be with you again. Good to be with you again. With you too, of course, of course it is. No, I am so glad to actually spend the time to talk about different things. And you have something on your mind. I do. You know, I was just thinking, we always are talking about the yin and the yang of what it takes to make it. Is it environment? Is it uh, nurture? Is it networking? Is it what you know, who you know, what you know, that debate? And so we, um, we have a special guest that's going to come on, and I think he's a case study on one of these. I'm not even going to lead the witness, Your Honor. I'm just going to talk <laughs> to him and see how what his keys to success were. I'm just going to talk <laughs> to him and see how what his keys to success were. And I have some cross-examination for you, sir. Maybe I expect it. I expect it. <laughs> My I'm first question is, uh, how do you know this person? I know him. I know him, know him. Uh, this is a good cat. Uh, we met. Actually, that'll be a good, great, great question for him because I have my version of how I think we met. He has his, um, but we've known each other. Woo, probably at least ten years now, and um, and he's probably one of my dearest friends in the business, and has now transitioned over to just dearest friends. Um, so he's a good, good man, and um, doing it. He's really making it. Very, very proud of him, and has he got a great spirit. And we've done a couple of different things together, and and we've hitched each other uh, star wise. So um, I'm excited about today's interview. So he's in the circle. Uh, he's made it into the circle of to the Alvin Chia circle. Of, uh... <laughs> <laughs> he's in the circle. He's in the he's in the 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 show business circle. He's in the friend circle. He's in the prayer partner circle. Whoa, he's got so, a three-point play he, going yeah, on with you right yeah, now. Yeah, he is wow. a, a, a the trifecta of, of cats. <laughs> so this is very, very rare. We're, we're, I'm excited wow. about it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hear it. Let's we're bring him on. To let's Mr. bring him on. Jared Johnson. Jarrett A.M. Johnson, the <laughs> cat. <laughs> what to do? Buddy? Welcome, 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 brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. We're so Thank glad and me. honored to have you on, bro. Thank you for having honored me. Honored so to much. have you on. Appreciate you're on the road. You sound like you seem like you're Eastern time zone. You're not in California. I'm not in California. Uh, I'm in. Where am I? I'm somewhere. I'm. I'm coming San Diego. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's that's classic. I'm yeah, on the I'm road. Right. I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> where I am. I just know sound check is in 20 minutes. <laughs> we, 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 we rolled in about uh, five, six, five, five a.m. this morning. So I'm just kind of like, hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> rolled yeah. in from. But that's a good problem to have. It means you're busy. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yes. And I will, I will yeah. not exchange it for anything. I would not change it for anything. Jared and I have become very, very close over the years. And we're in a, at least two or three circles together. So I've been already on the phone with him in our prayer circle. That's the most inner circle. Then friend circle, and then our professional circle, which we we're talking today. So I, 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 I can And he's witness. got a three-point play going with you, huh? Three-point play, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so we're, we're very excited. Jared, tell us about some of the, some of the amazing um, influences that you've had that got you where you're going and where you're headed. Oh my. Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a child of harmony. Uh, you know, obviously it all started in the church, like so many of us. Uh, I started as a Sunbeam choir member, so the Sunbeamers, we were the little kids. And, you know, my first, my first uh, solo was, Jesus is the answer. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was, that was me. And, and you know, I, and thankfully I didn't cry because my mom and dad would have been, they would have had a fit if I'd been out there like, you better sing the song. Uh, and, and, and it all kind of started from there. And then uh, a deacon at my church, uh, a gentleman named Mike Harris, 
who to this day is still one of my closest and dearest um, big brother mentors, mm. um, introduced me to this group called Take Six. He actually mm. got me, he, he recorded a tape that I later broke because I just continued to play it over and over again. And eventually um, Alvin sounding like, <laughs> I was, for, for those of you watching, there are these things called cassettes that, that we used to have right. back in the day. Way back when. Let's just date all of us right now. And if you play them, too many times they will start to get what's called warped anyways uh i played that thing so much trying to learn what i now know is to be claude's part because i'm like i can sing the high part let's just go for it um mm. and 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 it really kind of all started there and then you know harmony was my was my love and r&b and you know so you know boys to men and stevie wonder brian mcknight those were the guys that really kind of really just got my got me excited about music and after a while i uh I found myself in a group in college called Chapter Six. Mm. The, the, the name was was uh, in place before I became a member, but they literally were like, "We need a name with six in it because we have six guys." Take, <laughs> take six. Is take taken. six is taken. <laughs> it's taken. <laughs> so uh, Chapter Six was a professional endeavor I had with those guys from for almost twelve years. Um, oh wow! Shortly, mm. shortly after college, we we started doing that and. And as, as, as the time kind of, you know, started to move forward, we found ourselves um, understanding that guys are getting married, families are starting to grow. And that was kind of my, the impetus for me to move out to Los Angeles because I kind of oh. saw the writing on the wall as to what was coming up next. You know, we're going to lose some guys and, yeah. and, and it was no longer going to be the priority to tour. And so I found myself and my wife uh, moving out to Los Angeles in 2009. And, and you I guys were on the same page. Oh, move. absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Um, Andrea and I were both living in Bloomington, Illinois at the time, which was my hometown, mm. and found ourselves kind of just understanding that this is a nice town. Mm. For, it's kind of slow and everything else, but we felt it was not our home. Good. And so we found ourselves moving out to Los Angeles as a leap of faith. Um, and I was pursuing uh, songwriting and, and, and artistry. And did not know a thing about what was, you know, as far as like Jared, she's like, Jared, do we have a budget? Do we have a plan? I'm like, yeah, I got a plan. <laughs> it's going to be great. And I was, and that's why I have such an amazing wife because she saw, she, she, she saw a plan much bigger than even my very weak and very mm. unfounded plan uh, and set up. So she, she was very kind and, and believing and having faith in God and having faith in me following uh, Christ as best I could and leading us out there. And um, fast forward from 2009 to now, I've had the opportunity to uh, be on television, on film, uh, sing for vocal sessions to be the vocal score underneath some of those uh, productions. Um, I've been able, uh, yeah, acting now, which is a thing I never saw coming, uh, touring, you know, touring the world with acts like Michael Bublé and Take Six, writing for groups like Take Six. Um, it, it, there's just been a, an incredible uh, whirlwind of things I've been able to experience up until this point. And I really believe that it's still only now scratching the surface. I'm getting into vocal contracting now. And, and, and my hope, my really, my heart is to honestly get more people who are ready and who desire to be in the position to start really creating, you know, residual income, passive income yeah. and doing yeah. this thing yeah. that we do. Cause I mean, there's so many of us that are doing this on the road thing, which I love to do. Mm -hmm. But once that check clears, check it's SA. Over. Yeah. And, and so, so the idea of being a part of, you know, the SAG-AFTRA union and being able to create income passively when you get on a project and then watching checks come in based upon the success of the project. Yeah. That's what I want to see happening for yeah. more people who have either been marginalized or otherwise haven't had the opportunities that some of our other counterparts in this side of the industry have had. And for me, my aim and my hope is to just to really just to be a gatekeeper, to be, yeah. to be a, an agent of change for, for the system that we're trying to kind of I want to completely tear it down, but I want to see some major shifts happening. And if I have the opportunity to be a part of that change, then I want to be a part of it. Beautiful. You know, one of the things that I noticed you said you went to um, LA from where you were, do you feel like that helped you to get a better network in terms of being, cause you know, one of the things that people do, they want to do a lot of things online, you know, with social media and so forth, which is important, but I do think that being able to connect with people one-on-one -on -one, to have that relationship. So like you said, you develop with Alvin. Oh that, my gosh, that's yeah. important. Do you feel like that helps you be in LA? Oh, absolutely. Um, 
the one thing that I, I know I was not going to be able to do was become a, a hit songwriter from my basement in Bloomington, Illinois. <laughs> I, I, I learned That's that. It's got a Wayne's quickly. World thing to it. For some reason, it's giving me that all day. <laughs> Ser- I mean, seriously, I was making some pretty good records down there, but and, and my whole mind was, I'm going to send them out to Los Angeles and they're going to want it. And that's going to be how I make my, no. Mm-hmm. Because so much of what happens in this industry is about, you know, if you're out of sight, out of mind, it doesn't work. If if you're on someone's, you know, someone on somebody's brain in somebody's, you know, sight, you're able to really kind of stay, you know, relevant, say, stay, uh, oh yeah, stay busy and visible. So that was, that's the thing that made so much uh, sense for us to make the, the leap to go out to Los Angeles. And and as many that's before social media you actually have to be social right <laughs> right thing, yeah. true, true. And, and and even in this age of social media uh and being able to establish yourself as an influencer and all that kind of stuff um i still believe there's a great deal of gain in being present yeah, you know I, I i can sure. do quite a bit of stuff from wyoming but if i haven't already established myself had enough uh relationships and and enough uh, just connections within the industry before I decide to make my journey to Salt Lake City or, or some place in Boise, Idaho, because it's whatever reason, I need to have already established myself and made the sure. connections. Sure. So, and so much of that came just by being in Los Angeles, making the connections and establishing relationships that mm-hmm. extended beyond just you know professional opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it also speaks to the fact that you helped to brand yourself when you walked in that room. You kind of helped them understand that you were professional, but you were also personable. You were somebody they wanted to hire a kid. I hope so. I mean, that's always the hope. Uh, I, I've i learned very, very quickly. And, and again, so many things I've learned, I've learned from my, from my mentor, my brother, um, Alvin. He's been such, uh, played such a huge role in just kind of learning how to to maneuver this industry. So much of it is, are the simple things, you know, being early, not being on time, uh, being prepared mm. and, and, and just do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. These are yeah. very simple things to a lot of people, but it's also the thing that is oftentimes the most difficult because again, there are so many people that can do what we do. Absolutely. The, diff- the difference maker is gonna be where you fun to be around where you want to how are you in the foxhole <laughs> precisely yeah. do people do people want to be around you while you're doing whatever you're doing because sure. that's going to make that's going to make all the difference in you continuing to be able to work mm-hmm. it's amazing to me you know there's anybody that's in a church family and you got your regular and you, you know people who have talent at any church service any body of faith there are people who are just talented to death. You know, my my local church, I, I've always said there's probably 10 people at my church who can sing me under the table. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just about the ability to sing that gives you your that 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 gene of success. It is uh, uh, having those skill sets, being able to work with other people, being able to be on time, uh, uh, being able to um uh, be pleasant to be around and not bragging about yourself the entire time. There's a fine line yeah. mm-hmm. about, you know, self-promotion and being available and being in everybody's face just to be in everybody's face. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I can, I can truly say uh, Jared has mastered that. Um, and to, like, I, like I've always said, to watch your ascendancy is, is truly incredible. You're not satisfied, um, with what you have now, not from a negative point, but you're saying God has given me more and I wanna be adjusted yeah. with more to be a blessing to others. So how can I push and, imper- and perfect myself? Absolutely, absolutely, it's, that's the thing. If I, I know I'm, I'm nothing, you know, uh, Alvin always says this and that's something that kind of rings in my ear. God is a source, mm-hmm. you know, yes. I, I, sh- I, shall bow, I shall bow down to no man on this earth because mm-hmm. they are not the ones that are giving me the opportunities. They're not the ones that are keeping, that are keeping us, you know, alive and, and, and thriving. They're True. not the ones. So if I continue to keep my focus, regardless of what somebody may have an opinion about something that I say mm-hmm. or do, I know m- what my intentions are. And my intention is to do good and to be, um, you know, a good ambassador to mm-hmm. the kingdom. And, and mm-hmm. that's, that's my hope at, at all times. Yeah, it shows you that it supersedes uh, your relationship up and supersedes your network going sideways, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Absolutely, without Mm -hmm. question. Connections that you've had that um, were bum steers. I'm trying to figure out how to to word this in a way that's not, uh, (laughs) that doesn't come off 
weird or wrong. Uh, have there been experiences or have there been um, uh, people you were introduced to or experiences that you've had that have made you say, oh, I'm not going that way or mm, this is what I signed up for. I'm never doing this again. Well, there have been so many cautionary tales that I've been able to witness. Uh, well put, well put. Where I'll see, for example, you, you've actually said this to me before, meeting your heroes. Mm-hmm. And, and when you meet your, you don't, you're always told never meet your heroes because more often than not, or not more often than not, but sometimes you'll find that they will be underwhelming. They will be disappointing. They will mm-hmm. actually throw you completely off to the point where you don't even want to support any right, further be- right. because, be- because you know, you- you've seen behind the curtain, Yeah, you know, oh, and, absolutely. and, and the, and the image that they put on, you know, on, on stage or screen is mm-hmm. entirely different from the person that they are, you know, behind the scenes. So uh, the, the tale, I guess the lesson for me is always going to be, you know, one, don't I'm not placing my 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 hope in this person. I, I, for example, there's a producer that I first met <clears throat> upon coming out here that I was like, if I can get on with this dude because he is doing everything for all the all the big artists. I mean, everybody from Beyonce to da, 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 I mean, all the all the the heavy hitters. Mm-hmm. And then I got a chance to actually kind of be around him and understand what was really happening. And mm-hmm. and it, uh, and even though the opportunity to potentially create was there after mm-hmm. a while it just seemed in- entirely not what i wanted mm-hmm. you know all because of the person that he was behind the scenes true and so I, I i definitely have had that experience where i i've had that experience where i i, I it, the, the shine was very much erased from yeah. the moment and from the yeah. person and i and I oftentimes now realize that it's more just about again establishing authentic relationships right that again, will lead to what it's supposed to lead to. Mm-hmm. And, and in my, and in my, my time in LA so far, uh, more often than not, they lead to things that are surprising to me in the best mm-hmm. ways, you mm-hmm. know, not, not even realizing that this person was going to be the reason why this amazing thing is now happening or has happened. Mm-hmm. So, it's yeah. all about balance. A lot of times it's about balance. But also I think it speaks yeah. to um, your ability to keep yourself open, you know, yeah. because I think if you, like you said, when you first said, well, I had a plan that this is when I go out to LA, this was going to happen, and this mm-hmm. not happen. But if you had kept it, your box small and mm-hmm. I allowed God to actually put more and feed more into you, mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't be where you are now. I mean, like right. I, I hear you're um, helping, you're with uh, Michael Buble right now. That's correct. Yeah. So I'm currently on the road with Michael Buble. And I, funnily enough, um, I met him for the first time. It was actually my first trip to Los Angeles. Um, mm. I was working with a group called Naturally Seven, and they okay. wanted me to write a song for them to for, to, pr- to present to Michael. And Michael, if he liked it and his, and his team approved of it, he was going to sing it. They got, they got the approval. And so the part that was the best part for me is that not only was I flown out to be a part of the vocal session, I got to vocal produce Michael Buble in 2008. Whoa. Oh, wow. And he sang my song and we were in the B room of Capitol. And so I'm just thinking to myself, wait a minute, my first time in Los Angeles, I'm in the B room of Capitol playing ping pong with Michael before we start, <laughs> before we start singing. John Mayer is recording Continuum in the A room. Whoa. What? So yeah. it's it's those kind of Take things. Take that, that Bloomington. Is, listen. <laughs> So <laughs> I've never coming back. I mean, my mom is sad, was sad, at, you know, a little bit that I left. While at the same time, she also loves the opportunity to brag on her son, be like, "Oh, did you hear about my son? He was mm-hmm. blah 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 blah. He was in the show. Mm-hmm. He was Grammy nominated. Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. You know." So honestly, that's probably one of the best parts is being able to give my mother something excited to be something excited about. So yeah, mm-hmm. and something to talk about. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. She Speaking loves it. of Grammy, now I got to brag on you. So. Jared, like I said, we're in a bunch of different circles together, and I can't even tell you how many times Jared has told me, we're going to get you that Grammy. We're going to get you number 11. I'm going to get my first. We're going to get number 11. I'm going to get your first. And I'm like, ah, Jared, ah, Jared, ah, Jared. <laughs> this brother stayed on it, arranged this amazing song for, oh, that's right. in, the, in the wake of the George Floyd tragedy and uh, reimagined uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing. It struck mm. such a nerve and it connected with so many people that it meteorically took off like a viral sensation. Next thing you know, it had a gra- its Grammy nomination that he talked about and it was being vetted for 
the airing on uh, on the NFL and all kinds of different things like this. But that just shows the power of words and positive yes. thought that yes. this is where you said what's going to happen. And so I need to know from you, Mr. Jared Johnson, what are your powerful words going to do for you next? Where are you going next? Because I want to want to get some of that. In other words, what cryptocurrency do I need Wait, to buy right now? He's got to want to be on your coattails. Oh, the coattails, now you want to be on his coattails. Oh, he's going. He's going. <laughs> Whoever's going. If I'm going, fine. But if he's going, I'm going with him. Don't forget first, me. Don't forget me. First yes, of all, too. This, is a, this whole call is family, so we already know what it is. But uh, it's honestly my next thing. Well, first of all, I still I still owe uh, Alvin a Grammy. I still owe him a Grammy. We got Grammy. that nod, though. We got the nomination. We're, 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 yeah, we that's right. We, so we're gonna see if we can get we can get to the to the finish line this time, uh, with a, an arrangement that honestly is is more uh, Alvin's baby than mine. Uh, he did an incredible arrangement uh, of Carol the Bells with a, a mashup of my favorite things that we are submitting this year. But that's another discussion for another day. Let's <laughs> hope and pray that we can have a discussion about that later. But uh, honestly, it's being able to again just be a voice for the voiceless when it comes to our industry right last last year we were part of a, a panel that uh kind of just brought to a lot of people's um knowing that they didn't understand before that there's just not exactly the representation that needs to be happening in these yeah. rooms right. and i i wanted to be a part of this, this this panel with alongside alvin and a number of incredible uh leaders within our community to say hey we're not trying to, you know, say that what has been going on is is blamed upon any individual person. Right. But the system itself needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. right. And that's and that is my aim. You know, like I, I want my legacy to to be that I was able to not only uh, make some adjustments to the system, but to hopefully turn it on its head. So that way there's greater equality and equity in the room, greater mm -hmm. representation. And just there's the just kind of hopefully change the idea that people have to fight and claw and to, you know, to get there, to get the work. There's enough opportunity for everyone. Sure. And, yeah. if, and if we actually go about it with that ideology, I think there would be some great successes that would take place for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. I, we, I've said that God's table is big enough for everybody. Yeah, I don't have, it doesn't true. mean you or me, it could be you and me. Absolutely, without question. Well, and I, I wanna be a part of that change. Do you feel like that that change will come from those who need it or those who give it? Uh, well, my hope is as uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an old guard, if you will, that is kind of, you know, holding on for dear life. Uh, and I want to be a part of the, I guess, the next rotation or the next uh, transition of that guard in, in hopes that it'll also broaden the spectrum of singers and, and professionals that'll be in those rooms. Uh, as, as, as certain people who've been doing this for 40, 50 years, eventually, you know, it's time to, you know, pass it on to the next, to the next uh, generation of singers and generation of contractors. And my hope is that I'm a part of that conversation. That's my mm -hmm. aim and that's my belief. I feel that's where everything is going to go ultimately. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can just kind of, stay true to the plan and, and make sure that my, my heart and my, and my ambition is, is true to the, the whole of it and not just me trying to benefit personally. I think only good things will come from that. So I was just going to ask you, you're, you're blessed to now have so many hats on. You have orange hats, you got black hats, you got <laughs> so many hats you're doing in this industry. What is it that intrigues you now? You're like, hey, but if I could do that, if you were an actor, it'd be like, but if I could direct mm. well, you in your end, what is it that you really like? Give me this and I'm, I am good. Well, it's, it's empowering the community. It's, it's honestly, that's the, that's the thing, because I feel like that will ultimately not only allow for myself to build a career and have a, uh, a, a, a there's a stability there and being able to be home sure. as much as I love traveling, I love touring, I love seeing the world. Uh, I love the idea of also you know, being home and being with my wife and, and starting my family and, and being able to be there and available to them. Sure. Uh, but it's, it's honestly just 
empowering and, and giving other people the opportunity to be successful because if they're being successful, that means that I'm also being successful. Yeah. So that's, well, you know, that's, that's I was really going to say a few seconds ago that, you know, I really feel, cause you had kind of alluded to the fact that, you know, a lot of us need to help others. I feel like a lot of us have come to a better space, but nobody knows about it. And I think wow. that's what we're trying to do. Like really get that people, get people to see that, you know, just like you and Alvin, you guys do a lot of things that people don't talk about. Not just saying you do the voiceovers and you're doing the acting mm -hmm. and just there are a lot of opportunities and they aren't necessarily always just in LA, but I think, right. you know, cause we all can't all afford in LA, right? But we all can find a way to kind of extend that. People are trying though. Olive branch, you know? <laughs> that 405 yeah, right? and the 101 will tell you that. It, <laughs> yeah, everybody's out there. Just like it, right? <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, but I really think that, you know, especially in this world of uh, social media, the world has become available. Yeah. So, I mean, I know of artists who have gone to Europe. Raphael Sadiq went to Europe and became more uh, popular than he was been here, has been Absolutely. in the Absolutely. Any so jazz person you know, will tell you that that's the case. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's really yeah. about really not thinking that we don't have the opportunities. Not that I'm saying we still don't have some, right? right but I right. think that we're so busy laser focused on those 10 that we might be yeah. forgetting about the 100 around that are yeah. just sitting yeah. there available sometimes. Yeah. The world agree, economy yeah. is, is, is at our yeah. disposal. It really is. It really yeah. is. I mean, because look at you traveling around the world and Yala travels around the world. So really, mm -hmm. you need the United States? Yeah. Well, then the funny thing about my story is I've learned years and years ago that they're the advantage of being a recording artist and someone who tours is that you can tap into this economy like Norway's been strong forever. Mm. Things got slow in the U.S. Head to Norway, Stavanger, uh, Bergen. Uh, we know really? we know Norway cold. Um, really, oh, and, Japan, yeah. and, Japan. And, and Japan, and Japan, and yeah, just, so there, there's a world economy you can tap into. But when COVID happened, those shut mm. down, and it was like so. I always had been confident that I could do it on the road for as long as I needed to. But this experience that we just came through taught me that you can reimagine yourself and still work from home and be relevant. Um, and and it, being able to do what it is that you do from home, have that ax, um, your laboratory, is that that was the secret that I discovered uh, during mm. that. And, and just and just keep- And always it. being ready, I would think too. Always, always be ready. Flexible yeah. and, because this has been a time where we have to change a lot. Absolutely. A lot yeah. And, and you know, the good, the beauty, beauty of Jared will tell you the beauty about this business is, is, is you are the truly can be an evangelist. It's about a, being a beggar, telling another beggar where to find bread, you know, yeah. like, hey, man, they're, they're such and such is hiring. Of, oh, you got to hire my friend. You know, I got base. He can get tenor um, and we can get such and such and let's go. And next thing he finds the bread. Hey, well, I got the tenor. I, you need to go get this base. And we keep each other busy and in the loop and 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 look out for each other and um, that's that's how it that's how it works. Which yeah. is another beautiful way to network, right? Yeah, get those relationships. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of our one of our dear friends in, in the industry, Eric Bradley, he says we are each other's uh, you know referrals and 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 sure. and, mm. and and and, prom and promotional or promoters. Sure. Like we sure. I I get a I get a job so often because someone else said, oh yeah, I sang with Jared on X Y Z. Mm. he absolutely be perfect for this and mm. that's literally how you start to make a name for yourself and just and honestly make a career yeah it, mm. you know? there are times that i would say where i can't do a gig because i'm either booked somewhere i'm going to be out of town or whatever and i call in a guy there's a guy that i go to six or seven times a year and um you know i call him in and he nails it you know the trick is having somebody who can nail it about 80 percent of what you can do <laughs> you Not don't want somebody with right. you. Yeah, don't have him kill you just dead. But he's <laughs> he's pretty good. <laughs> but I'll be well, back in two weeks. Right. But the cool and the cool part is obviously that you are the first person that they called. And so that obviously right. you, you are they're already gonna err on the side of I want Alvin first. But right. if I can't have Alvin, I'll have first next. Right, right, and, right, right, and, right. And and that's the part that again you you get to kind of uh, rely on you know the fact that you've done a great work and you've mm -hmm. built this, you've already established a relationship and the integrity of you bringing in someone else who does a job almost as well. Um, that, <laughs> that keep, that, <laughs> because that referral is huge. That, that referral, referral is huge. you are that's your reputation saying everything that you know about me and believe in me. I believe in this person. Yep. Call, tr I trust this person with that responsibility. Give them an opportunity. Exactly. 
Yeah. But you know, one of the things you guys have in common that I wanted to kind of touch on is a, the fact that you, what you're doing in front of the camera on the stage, whatever, you also have back opportunities for residual income, for right. long-term income so that when you right. stop the gigs, you still have money coming in from something you did maybe five or 10 years ago. You got, can you yeah. speak about what you learned about that from Alvin and from other people? I'm Jared. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> joining sag after for me was just, it was, it was the, uh, the game changer for me. It was the, the, I, I cracked the code because mm -hmm. you're getting out. Not only, not only is being a member gives you access to opportunities to work in places you otherwise wouldn't be, but also You'll come home. I'll come home from working out and I check the mail and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I get a check for th from this thing that I did however long ago. And the fact that you can, if you continue to work, you realize that the, the three hours of work or the, or the eight hours of work that you did there is going to provide for you exponentially. It's going to continue to, I mean, that little bit of work is going to go a long, long way. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing that, that it's the whole work smarter, not harder thing. Yeah. You know, that, that Alvin has obviously been, been preaching to me since day one. And, and I never realized until I actually became a member of the union, and this is not an endorsement for them as much as it's, it's just that my testimony, I really found that it, it's been, it's just been a huge game changer for me being able to have health insurance because of it, mm -hmm. being able to uh, just, again, uh, have something, have something coming in as supplemental income while I'm doing other things. Yeah. It's it's a game changer. It's amazing. But it also sets you up for the residual, right? Because by union rules, yeah. if you do this union job, they have to pay you as long as something mm -hmm. airs or you know, somebody buys mm -hmm. it or whatever, right? You have as long to, as it's you have in to rotation. Get some money right. As long yeah. as it's in rotation somewhere, whether it airs, streams, downloads, mm -hmm. anything, we will see whether it be a three cent check or a mm -hmm. three thousand dollar check, it's gonna yeah. come. It's like That's your great. talent has birthed, you birthed your talent and that talent goes to work for you again and again and again and again, yeah. you know, and it's the exact opposite of like when you're on the road and you're killing yourself tonight for tonight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, in my case, there are many times that I've been home and that check is already cashed, you know? Right, exactly. And I mean, even the best example recently for me was my my opportunity to do the, the voiceover for this cartoon called Big City Greens. They mm. were like, I, I received various emails saying, oh, Jerry, there's going to be another reuse for this. So you're going to get this for this. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> three, there were three reuses of that particular um, recording before I even, before it even debuted. It premiered, oh, wow. it premiered about a week and a half ago. And I, I did not, and I'd already received multiple reuse checks. <laughs> and so I'm thinking to myself, this is the way you do it. Yeah. This is, nice. how, this is, this is, this is the secret. This is the hack. This is what yeah. you do. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's a beauty thing. The beautiful thing about it is it's like, um, it's the inside, like you said, the inside scoop that people don't know about. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be on stage for American Idol. Everybody wants to be the star on the voice. Everybody wants to be that image. But there are a lot of people who are working quietly behind the scenes that are cashing checks that you don't know who are every bit as bad as those person on stage mm -hmm. who but but have that have long money and, right. uh, and and that's the name of the game that's the name of the game that long quiet residual uh, 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 uh check money well if you look on the film all those people at the yes. credits <laughs> those are the Best ones list. that are getting the those are ones the yeah. names they stay out there and they can yeah. get those rotations so yeah and that's mm -hmm. that's the secret yeah that yeah. cast list man whenever wow. i get an opportunity whenever i get an opportunity to go in front of young people who are interested in the industry I, they always ask the question about, you know, how do you get into it? And, and the best part, the best answer, the best part of that answer is this, it can look so many different ways. It can look yeah. like so many different things uh, mm -hmm. because the, the, the name on the marquee is literally one small piece of the whole puzzle right. of, right. Of, of, of where you could actually be making, you know, a career for yourself. And so yeah. I always try to make sure that even if they're not necessarily the best singer, even if they're not necessarily a musician per se, but there are so many pieces, whether it be engineering, mixing, mm -hmm. produ production, mm -hmm. uh, you know, management, all these pieces to this industry puzzle. If you just kind of think outside the box, as you mentioned earlier, Kenan, you're absolutely going to find 
uh, you know, your way and find your space, your, your place within this industry space. Jared so, is so, Jared is so talented. He literally got paid to make out on camera by a commercial company. Oh, <laughs> he got literally paid yeah. to what? <laughs> to make out on camera by a commercial company. Yes, right, for commercial. All right, I need details please, on that. One. I can clarify, but I'll, like, I'll allow him. I was like, I'm like, I don't know what you're about to say. <laughs> Roll tape. Roll no. tape. Uh, so my wife and I, again, <laughs> another one of those, I cannot believe, I, only in LA. Only in LA. During COVID, there were, there were a lot of opportunities for families that are already, you know, within a pod or, or just, you know, couples that obviously are already married or together. Um, my wife and I auditioned for a Toyota commercial. And the commercial was essentially just, you know, they wanted to see chemistry. And we had this, you know, young uh, preteen daughter that catches us making out in a van. That's the commercial. And so <laughs> I literally received residual checks for making out with my wife. I'm like, this works. This, this is the life. Time. That's the, you, this that's is the it. for that one. <laughs> exactly. And so these are the things that you don't see happening. Um, come, you know, if you don't leave, if you don't take a leap of faith and leave Bloomington. Yeah. Illinois yeah. so it, it was it was a huge part to this a huge blessing to have only that would have happened by taking that first step only in LA well you Love have been it. an amazing blessing to us today I really appreciate your time I really appreciate that you were so open and honest about your your trajectory up and I really appreciate all that you've done for us and I hope that people learn a lot from you and from now and going forward Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Much love to you all. And uh, let's uh, stay in touch. We'll see what happens. Hopefully I'll have some more things, ex exciting things to talk about in the future. Yes, to making it. Yes, sir.